Hey, what's up, guys? It's Shaky Kid Tag, and today we're going to be bringing to you some high quality games against CMC Hugh. CMC Hugh finished number one in the world back to back. If you guys don't know who he is, go check out his Twitter down below. The link will be in the description. A lot of you guys have been asking, Jake, how do I break into the competitive scene? What do I do to get better at Clash Royale? My number one tip for all of you guys asking that question is definitely look at your replays. Be hypercritical about every unit interaction. Look at your strategic decision making and look at your card order. Look at things that you could be doing different in every single game and look at your losses to see where you can be improving especially. So guys, without further ado, let's hop into some of the losses that I had and let's see what we could have done to improve my gameplay. Alright guys, let's get into our first game against CMC Hugh. We're going to be running Logbait plus Rocket. He's going to be running Golem plus Pump. Golem plus Pump is definitely going to be quite an issue for us. We got to make sure that we actually have to Rocket the Pump every single time right now. That's the biggest thing to do. Never let them have an Elixir Advantage. If they have an Elixir Advantage, they can get a pretty nasty push. He'll slow roll a Golem, then he'll start a Lightning, or he'll Lightning my Inferno Tower, the Inferno will basically die, and then I, there's nothing I can do. So I gotta make sure that he's at low Elixir for the entire game. That's my objective, and when he punish, or when he goes up with a Golem on uh, slow rolling it, I always punish opposite lane, so then he's not having units that stack behind his Golem. If you go same lane as the Golem, anything that he defends your push is gonna go behind the Golem, and that's gonna be uh, pretty hard to deal with. So in this situation, I really had to deal with that Mega Minion. I elected to drop an Ice Spirit, and uh, I, I'm still cycling my Goblin Barrel. I'm dropping my Goblin Barrel every single time just because it's something that I... It's a low elixir cost card that cycles back to the Rocket. Every single time he's trying to outcycle me, guys, but I'm just having none of that. I'm making sure that I have Rocket in rotation every single time for his pump, which is a, quite a blessing, guys. Like that, That is the most ideal situation for me right now. I'm going to be trying to stack princesses, and that's one of the biggest things to do with this deck, as I said before. If you stack princesses with Logbait, guys, that's going to be the key thing. That's going to be the defining thing. If you stack a lot of princesses, that will make them use their log, and then if they use your, their log, you're going to be able to get a nice goblin barrel and get a lot of damage on them. Unfortunately for me, I actually like to drop my knight in the same lane, or the opposite lane of my princess. If there was something that I could have redone right there, I'd have dropped my knight same lane as that princess. The knight would have tanked for the uh, baby dragon. Then I would have been able to drop goblin gang on top of the uh, on top of his knight witch, and then then I, he would have actually had to deal with the princess guys, and uh, he actually didn't have to in that situation. So that was definitely the first misplay of the game. And if you guys realize right now, I don't really have a great hand. I have princess, I have knight. I don't really have any way of punishing opposite lane because I just don't have my goblin gang, and I just don't have goblin barrel. It's kind of. Uh, Kind of an iffy situation at this point. But right now, guys, you make you see me uh, making sure that he's just at a low amount of elixir right now. I'm going to be dropping an Inferno. He's pretty much in a, he's in a weird situation right now. He's not going to be able to log the Princess for sure. I'm dropping an Ice Spirit. If I don't drop the Ice Spirit right there, guys, then that Golem would have gotten so many more hits on that Inferno. All it needs is one hit, and that Inferno would have just simply died right there. So that was really well played by me. I actually really like that play. Um, but... Definitely earlier on, if I had kept my princess alive, maybe there would have been a little bit better of a card rotation for me, and then uh, he would have been punished a little bit more. But as you can see right now, I have two princesses on the field. I'm going for a higher Inferno. The Inferno right there is pivotal in defending. If you don't go for a high Inferno like that, then he actually would have been able to lightning the tower and the princess as well. He actually had to do a choice right there, and that was really good for me right there. So I'm going to be logging back. I'm going to keep two princesses on the field. This is pretty clutch. I'm liking my situation in this point. I have two princesses on the field. That's six elixir that he has to deal with. I'm dropping an ice spear. I'm dropping a knight. I'm making sure that that princess stays alive, as I said before. Another thing that I could have been doing with this deck a little bit better is I could have been going in for goblin barrels plus uh, plus logs when I know that it, he has his when he when I know that he has his log out of rotation. He's only going to be able to use goblins to defend. So if I go for a goblin barrel in front of the tower and then log, then I can hit goblins, and that would have been a lot better. So uh, that was definitely another misplay for me. As you guys can see, I'm making sure that he's not at much elixir, and then I'm going to go for a high inferno. If I go for the high inferno when he's at a low amount of elixir, there's really nothing he can do, and that's going to be a plus three trade for me. This was my big misplay in the game. This is how I lost the game. Right here, right now, guys, I decided to pressure. He's going to have log back in cycle. I see that he pumps up. I should have literally just rocketed his tower. Not the right side, but if I rocket the left side, it's guaranteed damage. I could have cycled two rockets, maybe some pr princess chip damage, and then a log, and I would have won the game. That's literally all it took, but instead I decide to pressure, and this is how I lose the game, guys. He's going to get back to log. I'm going to get wrecked. This is literally all it took. Actually, that was also another misplay. So I go for a barrel when he wasn't at log. I thought he was actually going to be back at log at that time. 
I went barrel behind the tower. If I went on the tower, that was going to be guaranteed damage, as you said right there. Or as we saw right there. Then I go for the guaranteed damage of the log right there. So, I mean, I played really cleanly on defense, utilizing a lot of positive elixir trades with my Inferno. But uh, I just, I fell apart towards the end right here, guys. I mean, I'm doing well on defense. I'm still keeping that princess on the left and alive. But, I mean, I definitely could have won the game by just rocket cycling. As CMC pointed out later on in the... Uh, in, in the matches, that's what he said he would have done. He would have just rocket cycled on the left-hand tower, and then I wouldn't have really been... He wouldn't have been able to do anything. See, the, look at that. those goblins getting the nice chip damage. If I had... At this point, with all the chip damage I accrued, all I needed was two rockets. If I had rocket cycled earlier instead of going for that barrel, then I would have been in rocket range right now, and I would have won the game. Instead, he's going in for the, go, or the golem push with the night witch and the mega minion, and that's pretty much just going to take my tower right there, guys. So, to summarize this game... Making positive elixir trades on defense, using the ice spirit on defense, uh, making sure that the inferno tower does not die using the ice spirit was really clean of me. The mistakes that I did, I just didn't rocket cycle. I went in for the not guaranteed damage of the goblin barrel, and I didn't goblin barrel on top of the tower when I could have. All right, let's jump into this game against CMC. CMC is going to be running a hog cycle deck, and I'm going to be running graveyard cycle. Graveyard cycle typically has a favorable matchup in this situation. When I hit double elixir, I can start going for a lot of aggressive graveyard poisons, and then I can start taking control of the matchup. All I have to do is I have to use my Night Witch and I have to use my Ice Spirit in conjunction to stop a hog rider and then go convert from defense into offense relatively easily. So I was able to do a very aggressive push right there just because I was able to defend a hog rider. I essentially got a free Night Witch for a tank for my graveyard and I ended up getting a lot of damage just because of that. So CMC is definitely at a deficit, but he's going to come back and win this game. I was really happy about my princess placement right there and I sniped a princess that he tried to pick off mine with. And I'm happy with, with this situation. I want to pause the game right there. So the one thing that I did really incorrectly right there was he got me out of cycle. I had an ice golem in my hand and then I had to cycle to an ice spirit and, and then goblins. The reasoning behind that was why that was a misplay was because I wasn't identifying how fast he was back to hog rider. I should have cycled my ice golem at 7 elixir even though I wasn't at 10 just so I made sure that I was going to keep up with the hog rider. In that situation, uh, it takes a lot of time for the cards to even, if you place down a card, it still takes time for that card to get into your hand. So I placed the, down an ice golem and it took time for the, the goblins to appear in my hand and I took, it took time for the ice spirit to appear in my hand. And then I felt the consequence of that. The hog rider got so many extra hits that it really shouldn't have done. So right now I went for a graveyard, I did pretty well, I'm still very happy with my situation in the game. Gonna go for Ice Spear plus Princess, gonna kill his Princess. I should have actually dropped my Princess a little bit later. As a result, guys, my Princess dies to an Ice Spear. I shouldn't have actually dropped an Ice Spear, I should have just solo dropped a Princess. In this situation, watch how long it takes me for, for me to drop a Graveyard. That was another huge misplay in this game, guys. The Graveyard should have been done, I should have pulled the trigger a lot more decisively there. Not a very good play by me. I was very happy that I dropped the Goblins after he dropped the Log, so I timed that eloquently, but, you know, it just didn't matter. In this situation, because I wasn't very decisive with my graveyard early on, I actually had to poison out the tower. That 240 damage at the, on the left-hand tower could have been utilized on the right-hand tower if I had played it correctly, and unfortunately, that might have cost me the game right there. So guys, he has a princess. I have to drop the goblins on top of that. My goblins right there on the left lane are going to do serious work. Going to kill two princesses. I go in pretty hard in the right lane, and I get a lot of damage there as well. I drop a Night Witch off to the side. That Night Witch is really clean. I'm liking the Night Witch off to the side. Whenever I drop a Night Witch off to the left side, it's definitely going to be a misplay. Because if I drop it off to the left side, maybe the Princess will clip the tower. Also guys, if you guys aren't, don't, under, don't know this already, Rocket Cycle does a lot more damage than Poison Cycle and my graveyard really isn't a reliable source of damage. Also another huge thing that made me lose this game, guys, was uh, him getting that nice Rocket Cycle at the end and then also having the Electro Wizard hit my tower. So the Electro Wizard did a little bit too much damage at the end, guys, and he ended up taking the dub. So to recap, I wasn't very aggressive with my Graveyard. I just waited a little bit too long when I had a Night Witch plus Ice Golem push, and my Graveyard just wasn't put off as well. And uh, as a result of not pulling the trigger, I then had to spend an extra 4 Elixir on a Poison on the left lane to finish it off. And then other things where I didn't keep up with his Hog Cycle, he got a Hog Rider that did a little bit too much damage as a result. And last minute, lastly, the third thing was... Uh, that Electro Wizard was a nail in the coffin for me, guys. Like, that Electro Wizard at the end, I just didn't stop it. It did too much damage to my tower, and it let him rocket cycle me out. 
So guys, let's hop into the next games. That was a pretty clean game by CMC, and I can't believe he managed to come back from that one. Alright guys, so in this game, CMC and I will both be running Logbait Rocket. This deck matchup is definitely going to be dependent on who is able to rocket cycle out each other at the end. In Double Elixir, it's very hard to punish rockets, and you really just don't want to be dropping a princess or a knight or anything near your tower for that reason, towards the end. So we don't know each other's decks yet, so we're not going to be going in for rockets. He's not going to rocket my princess yet because he doesn't know my deck. He's just going to drop his princess at the bridge, and he's going to snipe my princesses, or he's going to try to. The big thing with this deck matchup is, in combination with the rocket cycling, it's really winning the princess minigame. How many princesses can you get down on the field? How many can you protect? How many can you waste? make your opponent waste a log on? He actually had to waste a log on the princess right there, so he definitely opens himself up to a goblin barrel plus princess. I princess because I knew that he only had goblin barrel or goblin gang and cycle to defend it and my princess gets a ton of value. Not only does it kill the goblin gang or render it useless, it also gets a ton of damage on the right hand lane. So I'm very happy about the start in this game, but let's see where I went where I went wrong guys. Uh, it's, uh, it's coming for sure. CMC is definitely one of those guys that just makes your opponent make so many mistakes and that's why he's one of the best players. He just, for some reason guys, he just makes people make mistakes. And right there, uh, I, I made a mistake there for sure. I didn't drop my Goblin Gang very fast because I thought he was going to go in for a log. The mind games of CMC, just, he doesn't pull the trigger. He doesn't go in for the log. He just deems it too risky. And as a result, guys, I took a little bit too much damage because I was like, dude, are you going to drop your log? And then he doesn't, and then I eat some more damage that was unnecessary. So as a result, guys, I should have dropped my Prince, or I should have dropped my Goblin Gang a little bit earlier than I did on that. So right now we see that we both have princesses in the left hand lane. We're going to see who wins this battle. I'm going to drop a knight. I dropped my knight a little bit too close to my princess. That was one of my other mistakes that I made or that I did uh, in this game. One of the things that I shouldn't have done right there is if I drop my princess a little bit further back, then uh, it, it wouldn't have been in range of a knight hit or a uh, single princess hit or even an ice spirit hit. And as a result, guys, his princess just chipped away one hit and it killed it. So that was very unfortunate. The one big thing that you're seeing out of me is I'm making sure that I always have my log in cycle. He's trying to outcycle me. He's really good. He's very fast. And he makes sure that he's trying to, he's cycling four cards exceptionally quickly. He's trying to get back to that goblin barrel. And I'm actually going to snipe both of his princesses right there with an extraordinary, extraordinarily lucky goblin gang. Sometimes goblin gang just evaporates and it looks like I'm actually still in the lead right now. So... Uh, this is also another problem guys. He's just getting so many princesses on the field and I'm not defending my princesses as well as he is. So right there, he's still able to have one princess and it's kind of a snowball effect guys. I'm having to defend inefficiently every single time against one princess. And when you get multiple princesses on the field, Goblin Gang becomes an extraordinarily horrible card to counter Goblin or to counter princesses with because the targeting of the Goblin Gang is not always the best. It was really good for me in one situation, but now his princesses are a little bit further back, and my Goblin Gang just is not able to kill those princesses that are further back. He's going to be trying to go in for Goblin Barrels, but he just got, he knows that the Goblin Barrels is going to die, but the reason he keeps doing it is because that he doesn't want to allow me to have Log and Cycle. If I have Log and Cycle, then it allows me to Log the Princess, or it allows me to Log the log the goblin gang and that's just something that he's doing a really good job of if you notice that guys i just have no answer to the triple princesses on the field he completely outplayed me and it snowballed so hard right there guys although i did a really really clean ice spirit there and it will uh it will cause the princess to die it'll kill the goblin gang and that ice spirit kind of put me back in the game but as i said guys the person that has the elixir advantage the person that has the tower damage and is starting the rocket cycle early on is going to be the victor now my tower is in rocket plus log range and it's exceptionally scary for me i don't like the situation that i'm in right now i know that it's kind of a risky situation but i've kind of already lost this game unless he makes a mistake which he does right there he actually drops the princess he does the same thing that i do but for whatever reason my princess doesn't target it but as i said guys it's rocket plus log range i gotta go in I gotta make something happen. I go in for a log. I'm trying to cycle back to a rocket in time before him, but I don't even think it would happen. And it's good game, guys. CMC outplayed me, as I, as I said earlier. Cycling princesses, whoever gets the princesses on the field has the map control. Makes your opponent just be very inefficient on defense. Allows him to get an elixir advantage that he's able to convert into tower damage with rocket, and I'm not really able to punish it. So well played to CMC, guys. I hope you're able to take away some things on that game. And let's jump into the next one.
Guys, it's also incredibly important to go over your wins. You can always derive mistakes from almost every single game that you play. I never get complacent, and that's always one of the things that helps me improve. I'm going to be going over this game as well. So I, I guarantee you that I can find a few mistakes. I know that I cycle my goblins at the start, and I'm it was a really bad play. Cycling goblins and splitting them, like right here, uh, CMC did it, and I cycle my goblins and split them for no reason. If you cycle goblins, they can kind of just get ignored. As you saw in the left-hand lane, the two goblins were completely ignored. They did no damage. And as you're seeing again in the right lane, the two goblins did no damage. It was completely pointless. I should have cycled all goblins in the right lane, cycled them in one lane, and then they could not have gotten ignored. So right here, I'm playing this pretty well. I time my log out very well, but I'm not really having a very cohesive push. As you guys noticed right there, my giant on the left side is just left to die because I did have to deal with that graveyard. So that was really well played by CMC. And another really good play by CMC, he's defending his princess, a sign of a good player, dropping the ice spear and then dropping the night witch to make sure that I have to expend more elixir. I actually had to poison that to make sure that the princess did not survive. So guys, he's up elixir because uh, I didn't really get a great push going and I... Uh, I do make the correct play here. I go in the same lane that he has all his damage in. You always want to go the same lane as where your opponent has all the damage. You don't really want to deviate from that. I go the lane where I have seven or 1,700 damage because I want to defend that tower. I don't want him pushing into that lane and then getting a nice graveyard off on that lane. If he goes on the full health tower and goes for a graveyard, I have some leeway there. If he, uh, if he wants to trade lanes, it's fine with me. So me me logging that princess basically says that I can't kill the uh, I can't kill the night witch with a poison plus log, which I'm fine with because I don't really have a great way of killing that night witch anyways, or don't have a great way of killing that princess anyways besides minoring it. I'd much rather minor the tower and get some nice damage here. The other thing is I definitely have to deal with these goblins, so let's see how I do that. I I think that uh, do I just let those go? That's no, I don't. All right, so that was really well played by me. Last second dropping the goblins, very well timed. I also dropped my Night Witch up high, so that was also a decent placement but as well. If I drop the Night Witch up high, it's kind of uh, it's an aggressive poison for him because my Night Witch is actually going to get out of that. So me going for that Night Witch placement might have just uh, precipitated the win of this game because I also have those. I still have my bats alive. Like that was that was probably the clutch play for me. And uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy with the game so far. I definitely shouldn't have cycled the goblins. Anything else? Uh, yeah, so that, that Night Witch maybe should have been placed up a little bit higher because look at that. The Princess is actually going to hit the Night Witch and it's going to hit the Tower. So if I did my original Night Witch placement, maybe I would have mitigated a little bit more damage and it made the game a lot closer than it should have been. So that was definitely something that I should have uh, should be wary of. should never place my Night Witch right there. Going to go in for my minor plus giant and I'm going to take the dub. There are definitely some things that I could have cleaned up that I should have been doing differently. That Night Witch in the middle that allowed the Princess to lock onto the tower and the Night Witch was definitely a huge mistake. And another slip up was also not cycling the goblins in one lane. If I split the goblins like I did it before, there was no value out of them. If I cycled them in one lane, it demands a response or it would have gotten a little bit more tower damage and made the game uh, end up a little bit faster. Huge shout out to CMC for finessing me throughout the entirety of this video, guys. His Twitter will be down below. Go check him out. As always, guys, let me know down below. What do you think of this new type of video? Love it or hate it, I'd love to know. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for chilling with me, and I can't wait to see you guys next time.